when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know. This is 4F Beauty. And if I've done my job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Don't worry, Glorious Technicolor is on the way. Think of it like the Wizard of Oz without having to dump a house on a witch to get her shoes. No talking scarecrows or tin men or lions, to be quite frank. At the moment, no shoes on. Anyway, you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Today, in this particularly beautiful, not that you can actually see it because you're watching it in black and white, but in this particularly beautiful holographic, sort of fish scaly, mermaid tail beauteousness in here I have got some shadows from a UK indie brand a new one and my mission today is to try these out so if you want to find out what colours I've chosen, how well they do or don't perform, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and of course what I'm going to waffle on about at you today. It is now time, confirmed by Sammy the Sloth Straw, For you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, okay, I would have shown you the outside of this beautiful palette in the intro. I might even have shown you the inside. Who knows, I haven't filmed it yet. This is a Tarte palette, believe it or not. But in here, I have got some shadows from a company called The Pastel Roses. Now, these five I bought myself. This was a freebie. And they also included a loose, like a glitter topper almost, in shade Orion, which shifts from like a teal through purple and green and very pretty indeed. But it is very much a topper style pigment. That you can see is a split pan. So technically it's three colours, I've got yellow, I've got orange and I can blend the two together. These two are white bases, this one has a hint of pink, this has a hint of blue. All of them um, have like a shift to them, even if it's just within the same colour field. So, um, you know, purple, blue, red kind of thing, even though it doesn't look red but hopefully you can see those and how pretty they are I'll just swatch them on the back of my hand that's pathetic swatches but it does give you a bit of a clue on the shift as does what's now left on my fingertips so um, you know me and finding new indie brands I think 
never did uh, matte shadows but I was just interested in getting um, these sort of shifty duochrome type ones. I'll start from here, work my way across and tell you what they're all called. This one is Sweet Pumpkin, that's the yellow orange. This one is Spell, this was a limited edition for Halloween. So I don't know how many of that will be left. This one is Interstellar. This one is Dark Moon. The one with the hint of a pink to it is Loose Heart. And the one with the hint of blue, which I had to get, is Snowdonia. Because of course, being part Welsh, I had to have that one, didn't I? I just had my nail in it. That's a bugger. Right, now people are probably thinking, how are you going to create a look with just shimmers? And my answer to that is really bloody easily. Um, you will get more fallout by using them as a mat, but you can use them as a mat and with a majority of, of shimmers I don't know if it would be true with these duochromes the more you blend them the more of the shimmer pigment kind of dusts off and you get le left with the base colour underneath so I'm going to have a play with these today and just see what they're like um, if they're nice I may go back and order some more which probably means I will go back and order some more because you know what I'm like. Especially when I find a UK indie brand where I'm not paying a damn fortune on postage fees and import fees and stuff. As ever, this remains a teaching channel so I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. That's also partly due to my chronic pain. Um, I also zoom right in so it's just my eyes on screen. There's a reason for this. One, you don't get to see how often I wince and grimace with pain. Uh, but two, if your eyesight's not what it was cracked up to be and you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's going on. It does mean when I look down to grab more pigment or clean a brush or whatever, you do get a lovely shot of my hairline. But for me that's a trade-off that's worth putting up with so that you can see exactly what is going on. So, uh, I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. The number of people I see say they've got hooded lids, even big beauty gurus who should know better when they've actually got deep set eyes. And you may be thinking, well, what difference does that make? makes a hell of a lot of difference because although the way that eyeshadow wears through the day is very similar the method of application is different for both eye type in order to get the best result and for that result to last as long as possible. The inserted clip will be very close up, it will just be my eyes on screen and once that's done I'm going to be back to be putting some of these pigments on my eyelids. So, without any further ado, this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example 
you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay, I'm starting off with a, a medium kind of blender brush. I don't want a huge blender brush. That's difficult to say blender brush. I want to say Brenda brush. Oh, blender brush. Um, because I want to have a little bit more control about whereabouts the pigment goes um, and I also don't want it spraying glitter everywhere I know I haven't done my base yet but I still would rather not be on a glitter clean up straight away so I'm going to start off by going into the shade called Spell okay these are quite softly pressed so be quite careful with them. Don't dig around in the pan too much. I always hold the brush right at the end and if the handle's long enough I brace it against my palm to help stabilise the other end. And we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz blend. Now this involves 
natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I'm 46 years old, skin on my eyelids moves. Two, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers who have the same thing, it can just be genetic. Um, and if you rely on the windshield wiper that you see the majority of people do, you run the risk of your eyelid sort of creasing and folding over on itself. That's when you get the telltale tiger stripes and barcoding, which is a dead giveaway that mm, your lids are not as tight as they could be, you know. Now, I always start at the outer edge because if you do deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort it out when that, you know, is in the way. And I'm going to start kind of just above my natural crease. I'm just going to slowly pop this colour on. You see, the way a pigment behaves is often down to the type of brush you use. If I was using a packing brush, this would not blend like this. Um, it's nice to actually see a pressed pigment like this. Because all too often any multi-chrome pigments tend to be loose. Now I don't have an issue with using loose pigments, but I know that a lot of people are not fans. So it's nice to see a company do them as a pressed pigment. You can see that's actually blended out really easily. Not a huge amount of fallout either, which I'm quite impressed by. So I'm going to pick up some more of that colour and do the other eye. The reason I do both eyes kind of at the same time is because, um, especially with fibro, I've noticed that my eyelids can swell and I can end up with one lid being a lot puffier than normal um, or to be puffier in a different area than normal and then when you kind of relax, because your eyes are not symmetrical, so you can do exactly the same shape of, you know, the pigment that you've laid down. But then when you sort of sit back, relax your brows and look at it, you, you can have two completely different shapes. So if you've then blended other colours on top, it's not always easy to work out. You'll look at it and you'll think, oh, I don't know, they don't look the same. They don't, they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're not similar enough. And it's very difficult to work out why once you've got all of the other colours piled on top. Uh, it's very overcast here again today. I've been waiting for it to, to brighten up a bit, but uh, no such luck. And as it's now half eleven, and this film needs to go up tomorrow, I thought if I don't film it soon, gone boom, trouble. Okay like that. I'm just going to give my brush a clean on a washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches, they're way too harsh on the bristles of your brush. I 
Oh, my friend Jamie wanted to hear me say Heerreith, by the way. Which can be said with a very rural art of Heerreith. There you go. Right, I'm going to go into Interstellar next. Same brush. And I'm going to run this just along the top edge of that first shade that we've put down. Now if you're going to blend two colours together, it's much easier to st oh, look at that. To start half on the colour, half off the colour. Rather than start above it and then try and blend it in. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to really lightly buff across the top there with this blue. I mean, this would be a great, you know, Christmas look or New Year's look. Not that it sounds like we're going to be going anywhere Christmas and New Year this year. One of the things I like about using shimmers like this as a mat. I struggle sometimes here and here to um, to get mats to blend so that they don't look patchy because I have very very dry patches just there almost like an eczema and uh, I've noticed that um, Shimmers just don't seem to mind how dry your skin is. They'll just blend away happily to themselves. I'm actually really imp impressed with the lack of fallout from these shades. I was expecting to have glitter big khaki all over here, you know. And yes, I know these shades are similar, but you can see there, there is a big difference between the two. Right, here's what I was saying about difference. You see, this one looks nicely curved. This one looks flat just here. So I just need to bring that centre bit up. Just a fraction. So it looks more like the other side. See, I really don't mind using shimmers all over my lid. I know it's one of those rules that once you're over 40, you're not meant to put shimmers everywhere. I see a rule, I'll try and break it. <laughs> change my brush. I've got some pencil brushes around here somewhere. I might use this one. This is a quite a loosely packed brush. I mean this may spray the pigment every bloody way but I can't find the brush that I was looking for which is super frustrating because I know I have got quite a few But do you think at this precise moment in time that I can find any of them? No. 
So, going with this one and hope for the best. I'm going to Dark Moon now, which is the red one. I'm just going to pop this on this outer corner here. I'm not going to blend it too far across the eye. And then I'm going to add a little bit of it just to the outside edge. of the mobile lid. That's such a lovely sort of black currenty red. But you can see if you um if you've moved your crease line this is the point to follow your new crease because deeper shades go back and lighter shades come forwards. So by putting this along our crease or where we want our crease to be it gives the illusion that that part of the eye is further back hopefully you can see that between the two eyes there it just adds that bit of definition Your typing has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well, then I sincerely hope, my darling, that tomorrow is a much better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, having a breakfast or the morning shower, like I know Christopher J does when he's listening to me. Then I sincerely hope that your day is as fabulous as you are, darling. I am so liking this look. It's been a while since I've done a proper deep dark look. I like it. I like it a lot. Right now, you know the rules never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. But I am going to wet the pigment once I've got it on the brush because now I'm using a packing brush actually it's a lip brush to be quite honest because it means I can get right into that corner there um, there is a greater chance of fallout uh, I'm going to use this Makeup Obsession fixing spray you can use any spray at all you can use a moisturising one like MAC or Mario Badescu uh, fixing spray, priming spray, setting spray. You can even save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each time you do your makeup. However, just remember the golden rule. You can put a wet brush into a loose pigment, but not into a pressed pigment. Now I am going to go into Snowdonia mainly because the majority of this look is, is sort of the bluey shades but also because, you know, Welsh blood had to be done so, piled that onto the brush give it a spray And now the ferrule is wet, so tuck it into your knuckles and spin. The ferrule is this bit here by the way. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in place because then you're not going to have a brush, you're going to have a stick. 
Right, so I'm going to now apply this to the two thirds of my mobile lid that so far has not been blessed with pigment. Now, the first time I use a new pigment like this, I don't tend to do a cut crease or use glitter glue because A, I want to see exactly how pigmented the shade is itself and if I do a cut crease I can't always tell that and B, I want to see how much fallout I get from the shade which if you put a glitter glue down you're not going to be able to tell <clears throat> and when I've got some fallout here from the darker shades which doesn't surprise me but that's actually gone on quite nicely so I'm going to dry off the brush before going back in again now with this side I've got super deep creasing just here uh, that was caused when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital when they started pulling my eye around trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. Turned out I should have had an operation when I was four years old. And by the time they picked up on that, despite the fact my mum had been pointing it out for ages that I wasn't seeing properly, it was too late to do the op because then it would have swung the eye too far the other way. And I eventually lost the sight in it when I was 13. Uh, Lucky me, huh? But it does mean I do have to do some, the one thing that I tell you never to do, which is to stretch out my mobile lid. Now I only stretch it out far enough to straighten the creases. I don't put it out to my ear. And as soon as I have finished applying, I gently put the lid back into place. Now if I don't do this, what happens is that instead of the pigment being blended onto the lid like I'm doing now, it ends up packing loosely in those creases and then through the rest of the day it starts falling into my eyes and down my face which A, hurts like hell and B, can really ruin a look yeah. have to admit I really like this look Right, I'm going to pause you my lovelies and I'm going to pop some base products on and then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I've got a bit of a while before I can talk to you again but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely blooming instant so I'll see you uh, I guess right now for you hello as you can see I went in with dark moon on my brows so I have shiny brows to match my shiny eyes if you're gonna do it do it good uh, I did my usual soap brow using the um, honey glue strawberry sherbet thing from Pink Honey again UK indie brand um, they recommend using it wet I recommend using it dry because then it's ever so slightly tacky uh, which means when you then apply powder over the top A the powder has something to stick to and B, I've got an itchy nose, so I'm just having a go at it with my uh, foundation brush. I hopefully don't move the foundation too much. Uh, and B, um, the powder then sets your brows in place for the day. 
right. Going in with a flat top brush into that dark moon again. Might tap off actually on there. And then I'm just going to very carefully run this along the bottom lash line. Because obviously now having done my foundation and powdered and everything, the last thing I want right now is a big chunk of fallout. So I'm being super careful. These shades really are really nice to work with. Super soft. Good pigment. I'm really enjoying myself. I don't know if you've noticed. I'll go back in with that first one, Spell, which is the limited edition one. And I'm going in on different kind of brush. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped and chunky. So I've picked up a little bit of shadow there. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Um, you can use any chunky brush. I just like this because it just fits perfectly underneath my lashes to help buff out that lower lash line. Gone a wee bit grungy on us today, haven't I? What would this be? Glamour gothy grungy type? Glitter gothy grungy type. Things. Apart from yes, I like it. No, I don't. Hmm. They blended out really nicely. Right, I'm going to use this lip brush that I bought from eBay <laughs> well over 10 years ago and I'm going to go into Loose Heart which is that white with the hint of pink that I've not used yet and now you'll see why I did the red on my brow because I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail Now I get that this may not be to everyone's taste and of course you can always just put matte shadows on and then use one of these for a pop on your lid but it's been a shitty year I've got new glittery shades to play with so exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm using this one again for my inner corner and just bringing it down and blending it in with the colours under my eye. So pretty. I might actually use that one as my highlight. See how it goes. I think that could be quite attractive. Right, my lovely ones, once again I'm going to have to pause you while I apply mascara, highlight to my chicken bones and nose and top lip and stick it out of gin. Um, I'll also pop some lippy on and uh, do something with my hair and I'll be back with my finished first impressions 
and completed look. So don't go anywhere because it's going to be instant again. I am back. Okay, the highlight is the eyeshadow that I used on my inner corner. Super pretty. The mascara is the Mini Clinique um, Deluxe Size Sample that my friend Hedda sent me. My lipstick is by Crow and Pebble, the same people that do my eye primer, and this is shade Ophelia. And it is actually a stick lipstick, so it's super comfortable to wear. Uh, and I think it just pulls nicely with the colours that I have chosen. So, obviously I used the five that I'd ordered. Uh, I haven't used that one yet, and I haven't used the, uh, the loose topper pigment. But... I am super, super happy with them. Uh, they blended like a dream, even though they are multi-chrome or duochrome or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm really, really happy with the overall look. And I will quite happily go back and purchase some more of these, most likely in the new year. So, that's pretty much it, isn't it? I like them. I love them. I intend to buy some more. That's my recommendation. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you and they're leaving my films in your recommended list so it's not obvious that you've been removed. It's also worth double checking your notification status and again not just for me this is for all the channels that you you follow and you have notifications set for because when they apparently stopped sending emails a few weeks ago they knocked the notifications for my ones that I'd got set anyway from all to personalise which means if they change it back at some point in the not too distant future which is highly likely because let's face it they often change things without consultation with the people who actually use the platform um, then you're going to want it on all in order to get any actual emails through um, if you're new here I have got a hair or something sticking to my eyelash and it is really fidgeting me because it's the eye that I can actually see with so it's not just that I can feel it it's like I can see it too Oh dear. Right. If you are new here and you've uh, tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome. Hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is pretty much a good example of what you're going to get from me. Lots of wittering about all kinds of everything and nothing in very much at all in what I'm told is a very soothing voice whilst applying various coloured pigments to my face. So if this sounds like the kind of thing that you might be interested in, it'd be awesome if you too would like to hit that red subscribe button. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending emails again soon. Until they do. As well as a large back side, I have a large back catalogue of films you can watch. Uh, ranging from product reviews, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tag films. I even read in my favourite poem in one of them. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, you need to relax 
as I have said now, for what frankly feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge, my darling. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.